and he was burning hot and I took his temperature and it was 103.1. Just springs up on us and we have to suddenly go in and I just, oh, it's so stressful. It's just so hard. We just, he woke up from his nap, just barely, and he was burning hot, and I took his temperature, and it was 103.1. So he has a really high fever. He's like acting so sad, obviously. So I just gave him some medicine, and I'm just gonna hold him, and I probably won't get very much done today. Yeah, this is new. This thingy, my bob. Anyway. Yesterday we had a party called Treats on the Street and some of the neighbors were doing some crafts and then after they did the crafts my friend was like we can do a couple of those crafts so me and my friend did like these hair wraps things and we wanted to make slime but it was pretty late so we just did this hair thing we made up a couple dances and it was really fun. Yesterday was so happy and fun. And, but now Jay's not feeling well at all. So we'll see what happens next. All right, so I decided to take Jensen in. I felt like his breathing was just more labored than usual. I was watching for some signs of, bit of respiratory distress, which is like one of the things it's called bobbing, which means like, as he was taking breaths, his head was going up and down and he was having a lot of nasal flaring. That's also, those are all signs of increased work of, work of breathing, which basically isn't normal or good. So, and his respiratory rate was also increased. I know, I called my friend who's a nurse and she said that a lot of times if you have a high fever, then you're gonna have a high respiratory rate. Those two are ha go hand in hand. So I'm not as worried about that because I felt like his work of breathing was increasing. I just didn't wanna mess around. So I'm going in and gosh dang it. I am just so, this is why my nerves are like literally fried because this is all the time. It just springs up on us and we have to suddenly go in and I just, oh, it's so stressful. With my other kids, if they were having a fever, I'd be like, okay, that's fine, let's watch him. But I just don't feel like I can do that with him. I feel like if he's not doing good, I have to jump a lot faster. I don't feel like he has the same room to wait. And even though it's upsetting to me and I feel bad that he's sick, I just decided that I'm gonna take him in. So I'm just hurrying over there right now before they close. I'm just gonna take him to the Instacare. The, the ER closes at eight, so I'm trying to hurry over there before. Derek was at soccer practice with Bodhi and I just left Riel at home with the girls, so hopefully they're okay until he gets there. I just didn't wanna risk waiting anymore if he's, his fever was still so high. It was still, um, he's on medicine and it was still over 100. It was 101.3. And I'm just not gonna mess around. All right, we just got checked in. His oxygen was low. It was at 91. And um, his heart rate was super high. It was like 170. And he has fever was like 101.7 with his Tylenol now. So we're waiting for the doctor to come in. But I do feel like it was the right thing bringing him in so far. So hopefully we can get some answers. They did mention that we might have to get transferred over to the hospital. Hey. Hey. All right. What's well, I just they just went. I just went and took him into the Instacare. The doctor came in like right away, and we have to go to the hospital. So they're calling. The, she says she, he doesn't need to be ambulanced over, but. I'm just dry. I'm about to drive him over now. Yeah, we don't we don't need the ambulance. If I mean we're you're right there. Do you want me to? No, to it's fine. 
I mean, I'm just so tired of, I don't want to say of this because it makes me feel bad, but it's just like. You're tired of worrying about yourself. <laughs> it's just so hard. I'm taking him over right now. Uh, I, well, I'm not right now at this second, but I'm about to, so. Yeah. They said they were calling and getting, um, anyways, they were calling. The doctor was like kind of mad at me. She's like, did you know his oxygen was low? And I said, well, when I looked at his his monitor this morning, it said he was at an 89 last night. And she's like, why didn't you take him in then? An 89? That, that's kind of okay. Kind of. Yeah, hurry and go. And I guess we just stay put for now. Yeah, for now. Okay, see ya. Bye. Hey guys, so um, I don't know where Bree left off. Uh, Bodie and I just, just got back. In fact, we left his practice a little bit early. We were at soccer and she was texting me that Jay's temperature was over 103 degrees. Last night it was at 101.5 and we were, we were kind of hoping he was just teething. No, he's not. He's not just teething. So we're not taking any chances with a one-year-old that has that was born with respiratory issues and just kind of waiting it out. Especially because his oxygen was low. I, maybe Bree's already told you all this, so I'll spare you the details, but, so they are apparently at, she just called, and I guess she took him to Instacare, and then Instacare said to take him to the ER. Um, I don't know, I guess I don't know the difference. I thought Instacare could handle things like that, but that's fine, I mean, I just wanna be in the best hands possible. Yeah, Jay had to go to the hospital again. So, um, Cozy just woke up, and she's not feeling her best right now. It's always hard waking up from a nap. We've got Bodie and Brielle keeping themselves entertained watching the Ohana adventure. <laughs> They're awesome. They are awesome. Thanks, Jason, Rachel, for babysitting my kids tonight. Uh, we love them. But uh, anyway, um, I guess we just wait to hear what they say. I guess they were gonna come pick him up in an ambulance, but the Instacare's like 10 blocks away from the hospital, not even that. So it's actually faster for Bree just to take him. Oh man, that poor little buddy. It kills me because he is, he's constantly just so happy and so, um, just always smiling, wanting to be part of the show, wanting to be, doing whatever his siblings are doing, even when he's sick. You know, last night he wasn't feeling great, but he still just was happy, smiling, laughing, and that's why we just kind of thought it might have been the teething, but nah, now, now that we see it's gone above and beyond that. All right, the doctor just came in and checked his ears, and they said he had a double ear infection. So sad, no wonder he's so sad. But they're also gonna do a chest x-ray. Okay make sure that he doesn't have a pneumonia too. So, ear infection. So, so sad. All right, we just did the chest x-ray and he just got some Tylenol, some ibuprofen, and amoxicillin. And now we're waiting for him to do the x-ray with the doctor. And he's still not very happy. Oh, there you are. There you are. Mm. Okay, I just heard from Bree. And it sounds like so far they f they have found, and this is actually in a weird way good news, they have found that he has a double ear infection. I'll take that. That's something you can treat and, uh, and tolerate, you know, as long as he doesn't have some weird respiratory infection or virus, that we can do without, that he can do without. I'm trying to keep the kids, you know, happy and, and everything and, and um, so we're gonna roast some marshmallows here in a few minutes, but first I wanted to come down and do what I do when I see the sunset. This is always my favorite time and place to say my own little prayer, especially tonight for my little guy. Now it's time to go roast some marshmallows. All right, kiddos, you ready for bed? Should we go in? No. Yeah. yeah. Come on, it's time for bed. All right, we just left the ER. They said that he had the chest x-ray came back clear. 
which is really good because a double ear infection is a lot easier thing to take care of than um, than pneumonia. So he has the double ear infection. They gave him a round of antibiotics and everything else should look good, but I'm just really relieved. I don't know. I think the main thing is that because people don't, I don't know if we've talked about this with you guys before, but the this defect is one in 6,000. So it's very rare. It, I mean, I wouldn't say it's like the most rare thing that doctors see, but I think a lot of times when they see a kid come in with all of this stuff in their history, showing these type of symptoms, they automatically are just like, I don't want to touch it. I don't want to deal with it. It's stressful. So they just, I think they kind of get nervous and that makes me nervous because you're thinking if a doctor's afraid, like freaking out, because then that makes me freak out. Everything ended up coming back clear, which is the best case scenario and the ear infections are the easiest fix. Get on an antibiotic and he should be feeling better within 48 hours. So I feel like that was definitely like best case scenario. Anyway, he's getting sad. I need to drive home, so. All right, we are back and the kids are all in bed. And honestly, like I feel relieved that it was an ear infection. I can't remember what I was saying or not saying. Today was like just kind of exhausting a little bit because he wasn't feeling well like all day long. In fact, um, it was hard for me to film or do anything because he was so fussy and just like wanted to be held. And his fever was like around 101 all day. So, I mean, which obviously is high, but not high enough to make me feel like nervous that I need to take him in or anything. And we were just watching him. I was just keeping him on ibuprofen and the Tylenol and just, you know, taking, just letting him have a sick day. You know, when, you, when you're when you sick, you just want to be held or whatever. So I was kind of just treating it as that until he woke up from his nap and it was so much higher and he was still on ibuprofen and Tylenol and it was still really high. I just felt like that's when I, it kind of changed in its severity to me. I'm glad that it was just the double ear infection. I mean, I hate that he's sick at all, but I don't want to say just the double ear infection, like it's not a big deal, but I like the fact that it's treatable. You know, if he would have had pneumonia, which is what they were kind of thinking that it could also be, you know, that's going to take a couple weeks to get better. Plus it affects his airway. So that's just more serious in general for him. So for it to be an ear infection, and have a solution like an antibiotic that's gonna kick in and work fairly quickly, that's just kind of a big relief. So everything, it seems like with him, things just change like that all the time. It's like suddenly we have to go to the hospital. It's, it's not like, I don't know. That's just, everything like with him is just, happens really quickly. So we're glad he's good. I'm glad that Derek was able to hold down the fort with the kids. He survived while I was gone. And now we're just ready for bed. I'm a little bit worried that it's gonna be like a rough night for him because he's not feeling super well, so he might be up and fussy a lot, but that's okay. Now that I know what's going on, I feel like kind of bad, like I should have been more patient with him today. You know when you don't know your kids are sick and they're just fussy and you're like annoyed that they're like, it's just like, oh, I just need to set you down so I can do something, but if I would have, I don't know, I would have just, I mean, I did hold them a lot, but I would have just held them all day instead of most of the day, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, well, I'm just rambling now, so we're gonna end this video. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Tomorrow will be a new day, new fun. It's always an adventure. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.